Hi Scrubs, I hope you're well. So in this video today I'm going to talk about how do you get VIP account on horse. Uh, this is an updated version of a video I did a couple of years ago. So to start off with, I'm going to talk about how to qualify for VIP. Then I'm going to talk about the perks themselves. I'm going to briefly at the end talk about whether I think it's worth it for most players. So to start off with, if you don't know whether you're eligible for VIP, just hover over this, then click on subscriptions and it will take you to this page and scroll down. So here I'm on my American account where I'm not eligible. So to be eligible for VIP account, you must have bought at least 100 passes or have ranked in the top 50 players in the following rankings. General ranking, number of trophies, seniority, number of resets won in the past month, equestrian center prestige, creations, which includes designers and collectors, and you can also become eligible thanks to certain promotional offers. So if you don't know if you've bought 100 passes or you think you might be near to 100 passes, then scroll up, click on account, and click on my pass history, and it will take you to this page. And here it will tell you exactly how many passes you've bought. Now I haven't bought any on this account, so I can't qualify in that way. Uh, but some people who buy maybe five passes every couple of weeks, you may actually find that you will get to 100 passes reasonably quickly. Um, it might be actually the easiest way for you. So if you don't want to do that, the other ways that you can do it is with uh, reaching certain rankings. So we're going to start with general ranking. So it's this one here. So if we click down here, I'm just going to get to the top 50 here. Um, so the thing to bear in mind with this is this is not the one that I would automatically recommend to people because getting into the top 50 on most servers can be very hard. Uh, the likes of some of the big servers like International, very, very large scores, people that have played for many years. Um, the things that contribute towards this are the likes of your 10,000 most skilled horses, your trophies, your seniority. These things all have an impact on your general ranking and I have a video on general ranking if you want to check that out. Um, so this is not something to work on unless you're very close to already getting into the top 50. Now the next thing to talk about is trophies. So trophies might be a little bit easier for most people uh, depending on your server and the amount of trophies that people have. Big servers are probably a lot harder. So here, um, for example, you could look and see what the lowest is. So uh, which one you'd have to get to. So for this one, 251. Um, look on your server, then go into achievements and then go to your trophies. Have a look at how many trophies you have and then how many you have available that you could get. Uh, because like collecting, you know, different breeds might be easy enough. Um, then getting, you know, different coat colors, for example, collecting manure, maybe some of the companions might be easy enough to get. It's the likes of the divine trophies that are more expensive because you're going to need passes either whether you buy them or get them freely to do those. And you've also got the creations, which is where it can get expensive as well with trophies. Um, and then we've got like the likes of entering competitions. That is pretty much something that everybody can do. Victory is something everybody can do. It gets a little bit harder when you get into rosettes and then rosettes per horse. Uh, likes of Grand Prix and the Fountain and then Distinctions. Each one of these stages gets harder and harder. And um, then you've got question center competitions, you know, collecting the things from contests. Then you've got ones that just take a lot of time, like seniority, getting birthdays on horse, um, getting UFOs. So figure out how many trophies you have there, um, how many you have available to get that you feel that you can do, and then how many, you know, you're going to need at the very minimum to make it into the top 50 um, and figure out whether that's doable for you. So the next one is seniority. This is not one that I personally advise. So if we have a look at seniority here, this is the number of days people have logged in. And if you're not in the top 50 or very, very close to it, you're going to have to wait until either nearly all of these people either stop playing and delete their game or uh, stop logging in. And uh, you could be waiting years. It's not one that I personally think is a good one to go for unless you're like really good with your login streak and you've been playing for years. Um, like I had a perfect seniority on UK until <laughs> I missed 90 days somehow. So um, this is not something that I would go for. It's really just not one that's going to be available for everybody. The next one you may consider is number of resets one this month. Um, this can be quite good. It does depend on your server a little bit. Uh, there's a couple of things to bear in mind with this. So if we decided on the server that we wanted to get in the top 50 for this, okay, so here's the top 50 right now. Um, my advice with this is if you're going to go for resets, look on your server and see how many people are getting and then figure out whether you're going to need one skiller, because some servers you can get away with one skiller, some servers you might need a couple. 
if you don't know anything about skillers, I have a video as well as playlists on winning skillers on, on horse, so check those out. Um, because getting rosettes is best on with skillers. You can use some divines to do it too, uh, but sometimes that can get a little bit tricky. So in terms of getting into the rosettes one for the month, have a look at what people are getting, where you need to kind of be, and then have skillers ready before the month starts because every month this is reset to zero okay and you want to then have your skiller ready to start entering as soon as the month starts to get in there as quickly as possible and get as many resets as possible um, because that is going to make your life a lot easier in terms of as soon as you start this get on it as quickly as possible even get friends to help you if you have friends that have skillers um, that are maybe a bit lower than yours that can fill competitions or even high blops that are not skillers that are just close to your skiller um, to even run those races and get those reset comps moving because it really does make it a lot easier when you have help. Um, like I have done that before, I've had friends fill for me for uh, reset collections before. Um, so just consider doing that, you might be able to get them uh, without that assistance, but it's just something you can consider doing. So the next one I want to talk about is EC Prestige. So in the best question centers here, we've got a question center prestige. So if we just scroll down here, and uh, this is another one where I think having friends help you can be really useful, or even just sort of working alongside another EC owner. Um, I have videos on how to increase your EC prestige, uh, lots of different videos on different parts of it, so please have a look at those uh, if this is something you want to do. Uh, this is something that I quite enjoy working on as ECs, but I haven't done it in quite a long time. Uh, but I find one of the best things to do is to work alongside another person who's good at looking after their EC. Uh, because you can support each other, help both each other um, improve your EC prestige. And uh, it makes doing that a lot easier. It does take time if you're starting from scratch. I'm just going to say that to begin with. Um, it's not the easiest. But if you're not really trying to do this very quickly and you want to get your EC really good anyway, then you could work on that. Or maybe you're really close to getting into the top 50 for that already. So that's something to consider. The next one I'm going to talk about is the creation ranking. So we've got the biggest collectors, which is this one. Um, and if we just scroll down here so we can see how many people have got and where we'd have to get. Um, this can be very hard on some of the bigger servers, maybe some of the smaller ones it might be doable. It's an expensive one to get into because some of the coats you're going to have to buy um, because you don't have possibly. And uh, it can take a long time <laughs> to progress with it. So it's not one I would really go for unless you're already kind of a big collector. Um, the other one is the best creators. Now a lot of people look at this one and they're like, oh this is great, I only have to get, like, there's not even 50 people here. Um, I have had, I think, five coats accepted on the game in all the years that I have played. And I have had coats that I've submitted again and again and again that I've never got through that I spent a long time working on. It's very hard to get coats accepted onto the game. I don't really advise this unless you're very, very patient. Um, and if you're patient and you um, are good with your drawing skills or whatever, maybe you're not. Uh, like I see drawings out there that are like insanely good and then I look at mine and I'm like, oh my god, mine are so bad. So um, like I look at all of the ones that I submitted years ago and I'm thinking they're brilliant and I look at them and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so many things wrong with them. So it doesn't, you don't have to be the best. Um, artist out there or anything like that, but if you have the skills already, it helps a lot. Otherwise, you're going to have to work pretty hard, um, but a lot of patience because I have had many coats that I've never ever got onto the game, and uh, I have had, as I said, two on UK and I think three on international, and um, the two on UK, one of them I think got through the first time, which was insane. The other one got rejected multiple times before I ever got through and then the other ones that I submitted because I had about another eight coats that I tried to get through and they never got through. So my advice is only go after this if you're really patient and you're going to put in the time. Do not try and use anybody else's work because you'll lose karma. Don't do that. Um, only do this if you're genuinely going to do it. So those are all the different ways you can qualify for VIP in the rankings. So the next one is obviously the um, special promotions. So if we just go back here to the subscriptions. 
So uh, you can also become eligible thanks to certain promotional offers. Now, there's a couple of different promotional offers that we've had over the years. Uh, one of them uh, were the treasure chests. I think they were available in one of the Christmas packs. I don't remember how long ago. I don't know if it was last year or possibly the year before. Uh, but in the treasure chests, you could get VIP. And uh, as far as I remember, once you got it in a treasure chest, then you had on VIP unlocked as far as I remember. Um, the other thing is there is a little divine that I have on my UK account here. I'm just going to go over to my UK game and I'm going to show you it. So in here, there's a legendary horse that I'm going to show you. So let me see. Altair. So Altair on a day where he drinks twice today, he only drank once for me so it didn't work. Uh, but basically on certain days he can drink twice. When he drinks for the second time in a day, he gives you 24 hours of VIP membership. If you aren't, if you are already a VIP, your membership is extended by 24 hours. If you're not a VIP and you have Altair, then that actually will unlock VIP for you. Um, now, the thing that I just want to say, obviously some people will be going, well, how do you get Altair? Uh, you need Altair's, all of his parts, which is basically, if you have a, his saddle, his, uh, you know, saddle cloth, his bridle, the wraps and the ear bonnet, and you put it on a horse, he transforms into Altair. Um, these might become available in a future promotion, possibly. I got them all in promotion a couple of years ago, so uh, you could look out for him, possibly. Uh, he has given me uh, VIP sometimes, so that's something you could possibly think of doing. Um, but you know, it could be months, if not longer, before the parts for his tack come out again. Uh, but he will, on occasion, trigger uh, extra VIP. So the other one is the card promos. So if I go into achievements here and then collections. The last time this happened was the Nordic cards. Um, I didn't actually get the card myself, but basically uh, if you'd found the card, and this was for 10 days of VIP, that unlocked VIP for you. Um, and that would be a way that you could then have extended it and kept VIP. Now, as far as I remember, as long as you unlock VIP once, you have it forever um, from these special promotions. To my knowledge, now, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure once, if you'd got that, that diamond card, you would have had it then, the available, even if you hadn't actually bought it after that run out, as far as I remember. So if I just go back here to, yes, horse here. So with Altair, the treasure packs, and the cards, um, whether you buy 100 passes or you unlock it with seniority, even if you fall out of all of those rankings afterwards, once you've unlocked it's there and you can use it. Um, even if you cancel your VIP, um, it's still going to be available to you as long as you don't delete your account and start a new account. If you start a new account, then tough. You can't. You'll have to do it all over again. In terms of buying VIP, one month costs 10 passes. Six months costs uh, 50 passes. So you actually get a month free. Um, sometimes during Christmas, I have seen uh, little offers that have come up where you can actually get it for half price. Um, definitely look out for that because that might be the perfect time to get it. Um, I know a lot of people when they see that come up, they buy it. <laughs> that will do them for a year or more. I've seen people do it. Um, so the other thing that you can actually do, if you actually already have Pegasus, I'm just going to go over here to Prepod where I currently have um, Pegasus account on Prepod. Um, if you already have Pegasus going at the moment, say you had several months of Pegasus or you had maybe just a month of Pegasus going, um, actually it deducts from the price of the VIP. So like if I'm just going to get it on my UK account, obviously, you know, it's these, these are the regular prices. But if, because I've already got it here on my pre-pod, um, it would actually only cost me seven passes rather than 10 because I've already bought, I've already spent three passes on a uh, Peggy account. So that's something uh, to bear in mind as well. So don't panic if you've already got Pegasus and you're like, oh, I'm going to lose my Pegasus. No, it just takes the three passes or however much uh, Pegasus account you've bought. It just takes the price uh, off the VIP. So now I'm going to talk about the individual perks themselves. Um, I do have a video on what I think some of the best VIP perks are and uh, that will be linked at the end of the video uh, if you want to check that out. So just these top perks here that you get with Pegasus and you also get with VIP, but most of them are just extended, you know, you get a bit more. Um, I'm not going to discuss these because anybody can get Pegasus account, you don't have to qualify for Pegasus. So I'm going to be talking about these ones down here instead. 
So the first one is show your VIP status on your profile page for all players to see if you wish. So basically all that means is on your profile page here, you can tell uh, whether the game, whether you want to display this icon or not. So if you don't want to display this, then you can click close and it removes it off your page. If you want to re-add it, then you just click VIP symbol and click add. So it's just a way to show or hide that you have VIP. So the next one is make your game faster and more enjoyable by removing advertising. So I think as far as I remember, it used to be when you bought 100 passes, advertising was automatically moved, removed from your game. So I think with this, maybe if you haven't bought the 100 passes, but you still qualify for VIP, then you can basically turn off the advertising. That's all that does. The next one is purchase an unlimited Halo's Ray without getting a Harney pack first. So basically, if you go into the black market, you can purchase the unlimited Halo's Ray um, just here for a pass rather than getting it in the harmony pack and that's all that is next one is unlock the horseshoe studs bonus so basically if we just go into the shop here and we go to tack we will have the horseshoe studs available to buy from the shop um, you can also get it in the bonus pack as well automatically with this so uh, when you buy the bonus pack or if you have a bonus pack in stock the horseshoe studs will automatically be in that as well the next one is save your favorite seals, your breeding, farm, research, etc. So save up to 100 search criteria amongst the, the ones you have used the most in seals, breeding, etc. So basically all that is, if you go to your horses here, for example, um, advanced search, you have my favorite searches, which you can do here. So if I click that, it automatically goes to all of my divines. Um, you can do this with the seals as well. It's super useful. So my favorite searches, you know, I can automatically go in here and search for horses that meet that criteria. Now there's nothing right now. I'm on the wrong one anyway. But um, it's just super useful. If you have like horses that you buy all the time, you can just automatically uh, click on that and instead of having to go in here and click all these buttons. So that just saves a bit of time. So basically with this perk, get a chance to maybe test up and coming horse features. Basically all that means is on the home players page, um, this middle tab here uh, shows sometimes that the pre-pod server, which is basically the test server, because I get asked all the time how I get on the test server, and uh, VIPs um, have the chance to get onto the testing sessions after the beta testers go on. Um, and if that is available to you, it will show up here. There's a limited amount of spots. You have to click sign up and then you can go to the test server. So the next one is create and manage teams. So if you're a VIP, then you automatically can uh, create uh, and join up to two teams. That's all that is. I can't actually demo doing that because I've already used up my two. Then we've got use simplified rides. So if we just go to one of my horses here, simplified rides are just a really simple little thing here. So um, simplified rides, basically, when you have this, I'm going to turn it off for a second. Usually you have to manually go in and select them at a time, but if we have simplified on, it clicks it and it automatically does a set amount of time with that. That's what that does. Then we've got enjoy the Achilles heel automatically as part of the next pack. So if we were adding a next pack to this horse, we automatically get the Achilles heel for free as part of the next pack with that perk. Then we've got choose the gender of your second foal with the Harris pack. So if you're using the Harris pack, um, you get twins and those can be colts or fillies. But with uh, the VIP perk, you get to choose the gender of the second foal. Now, the next one is use uh, breeding items on lent horses. So basically, if you're a part of a team and a teammate loans you a horse, normally you wouldn't be able to actually use any breeding items from the black market on the horse. But with this perk, you are able to use it on loaned horses. And the next one is customize your horse's profile page. So if we go into my account here and we scroll down, there is this personalize button. So customize the action blocks layout of my horse's page. If we click on personalize. We can actually move the blocks on the page around. It's super useful because if you do a lot of certain types of care with horses, like say you uh, have a lot of paws horses or you blop a lot, um, you can move the blocks to one particular area and focus where you're clicking. It just saves scrolling a lot. Basically, that's what that's for. Then um, the next set of perks here, these are the choosable perks. So these are basically perks that you have to pick. They don't automatically come with VIP. 
No, you get 10 by default. I am allowed to pick 11 because I have the Shenma Divine and Shenma allows me to have one extra. So in terms of the first perk, which is increase your chances of giving birth to a unicorn to one out of four instead of one out of five. So that it goes to 25%, uh, which is really good if you breed unicorns. So this next one is configure the length of the simplified training for each skill. So basically where you have got this automatic training when you click the button, if that's enabled and it does a certain amount of time, you can actually set how much time the simplified training takes rather than it just being on the default if you have that uh, perk enabled. And then we've got get set the simplified ride duration for each type of ride. So this is much the same, but it's just for the rides because if I click on this, it's going to do three hours. Um, but with the one where you can set it, you can go in and decide how much time that click will actually do rather than the default. So that's basically what that does. Then you've got filter horses uh, for sale that are wearing creations you don't have yet. So if you have this perk enabled, you can go into the advanced sales, um, the horse sales here, and there is a way to search horses, uh, search for horses that you haven't uh, got the creations of yet. And it's very useful if you're a coat collector. Then we've got get the right amount of food pre-selected for your horses. So if you don't have this uh, perk, then you have to go in and manually decide how much to feed your horse. Uh, with this uh, enabled though, VIP, you just click feed, it, as you can see it automatically has selected the right amount of food for our horse. Then we've got automatically resupply at the store. This basically allows you to restock um, your breeders or your equestrian center store as soon as you reach a minimum value that you've defined. So say once you reach 500 oats, you can set it that it will restock the amount of oats that you decide. Um, and then we've got reach 100 blood before your horse is 10 years old thanks to the next pack. So basically all this does is it takes the age part away from the blood calculation. Uh, so that doesn't contribute and it lets you get to 100 blood a little bit faster with horses of the next packs. Then we've got automated horse purchases. So if we go in here and we go to horse sales, manage my purchases automatically. And uh, these searches that we were looking at earlier, basically I can decide how many horses I want to buy for what price and... You know different other parts of this so for this i just want scales over 500 if i click activate it then it will buy me a horse automatically when it does that uh, you can see that it automated horse purchase and then how much it was and it tells me uh, what the automated purchase was for in terms of the sale criteria then we've got assess the maximum skill of a horse so basically if you have any horses um in your breeding farm what you can do is click on a little view the details. Now, I don't have this enabled, so it's not going to show up, but we've got acquired skills, which is the amount of skills the horse has currently. And then there's another tab that lets you see the maximum skills the horse could possibly have, which is good if you don't want to have to manually work it out yourself. Then we've got purchase several horses or cancel several horse sales at the same time. So if we go into sales here, there is this little uh, tab here in the direct sales and the reserved sales where you can click to select horses so if I wanted to buy all of these horses and I don't want to have to go in and click buy uh, you know each one manually I click here and then I click buy and I can just buy all the horses that meet that criteria so then we've got bump your horse sales and orders to the top so basically uh, when you put horses into the direct sales um, they will go to the top of the sales at first and then when somebody adds a new horse your horse goes down so what that lets you do is bump your horses up um, every five minutes you can't bump it any more than five minutes so if you want to keep your horses at the top of the page where people are going to see them really quick you can uh, click on the horse and then click to bump it up then we've got geld your stallions when they're one year and six months instead of two years and six months so it means you can geld your stallions a year earlier than normal if you have that enabled then we've got access new creations before everyone else so basically all this is is you can access the creations that are newly added to the game 12 hours before they're officially released to all the other players in the game you can only get access to one copy per creation so it is limited and only half the number of uh, limited edition creations will be available uh, as well so if it's a hundred use code only 50 of those um, will be available and um, this is good for collectors especially on some of the bigger servers the next one is cancel the boarding of your horses when they're in your own equestrian center so if i had let's just say this horse here was in my own ec basically um there would be a button here that allows you to cancel the stay it's very handy if you say only have a few boxes and maybe you have a horse that you don't want staying in your ec overnight it might Im negatively impact your ec prestige um you can just kick it out of the ec basically before uh, the update 
Then we have gain access to exclusive statistics about your game. So from your game stats on your account page, you can see how many horses you've cared for. Horses over 30 sent to heaven that month. Rosettes won that month. Passes won by sending horses over 30 uh, years old to heaven in the last month. Competitions you've won that day. Visits to your profile page today. Visits to your EC. As well as horses cared for to earn equus, equus and agent points. So that's what that's for. And then we've got join up to 10 teams instead of two. So basically what that allows you to do is be in 10 VIP teams as opposed to two. Then we've got register your horses to competitions automatically in one click. So if you have this enabled, normally what you have to do is go in here and and then click on participate. But if you have this enabled, if we turn this little cogwheel on, if you just click the button, it automatically enters us into the competition. And if your horse is less than 20 victories, it enters uh, competitions with the chances of winning are the highest. If your horse has more than 20 victories, it registers to you to the most profitable competitions. So the next one is offer up to three copies when trading items instead of two. So all that is, if we go into the item exchange and we manage my exchanges, we can offer exchanges for up to three items instead of two. And then the next one is change your horse's speciality regardless of the age instead of losing it after the five years old. So usually what happens is when your horse gets over five, you can't change it between Western and uh, Classical. But with this perk, you can. So it's really super helpful if you're bluffing a lot and you want to switch the speciality, just edit profile and then you can click in between. As you can see, this is made available to me because I've got that VIP perk enabled. The next one is choose competition frequency in your question center. So if you have that perk available, you can go into your competitions in your EC and manage how frequently those competitions are run. I don't have that perk enabled, so unfortunately I can't show you that in this video. Then we've got remove show jumping and Western pleasure penalties. So in these uh, competition types, you can get penalties. I actually had the experience of having a top skiller lose and come 40 something or 30 something in a grand prix when it should have been first because i got a penalty so i have that enabled because it stops horses getting penalties because you could have a horse that's better than everybody else in the server for show jumping or western pleasure and you could put it into the competition and get a penalty if you don't have this perk and then end up losing the grand prix or losing a rosette over it and it's really frustrating so if you compete a lot and that's important that's a really good perk um, if you don't compete in those competitions it's not going to be a problem then you've got fine competitions with rosettes in them so basically if you have that enabled you'll be able to go into the competitions with your horses and automatically search for those so if i just want to pick a random horse here just click off that if we go in here and um, there'll be a little tick box that will let you search for competitions uh, for rosettes and it's a really handy one if you're looking to get a lot of rosettes then we've got prevent skill penalties when your horses aren't at 100% health. I have that enabled. Basically, if your horse is in 100% health and you're doing any training or any rides or any competitions, your horse can lose skills. If you have this enabled, that stops you losing any skills while you're doing those three things. The next one is run a search on retired golden apple coats by number of copies in the sales. This is super useful if you have that enabled. Basically, when you go into horse sales, you can search um, for certain number of copies. So say it's a 40 use coat, then you can search for all the 40 use coats that are on the game. The next one is reserve competition slots in your equestrian center for your team's horses. So basically, um, if you enable this perk, you can go into your competitions and set it up that um, you, your team horses have preference to go into those competitions. and. Uh, it's only a perk that you should really use if you know that your team horses are going to go in there a lot. So that was all of the choosable perks. The next set of perks are exclusive thanks to your special horses. So these perks you can only access if you own the Divine Horse and also have VIP. Now the first one is Spring, which lowers the maximum boarding duration in equestrian centers to one day. So normally it's three days, but then if you have this Spring Divine, it lowers it to a day. It's really useful for high prestige uh, EC owners. The next one is Summer, where you can reserve boxes as soon as they are claimed from the workshop. So normally the boxes would automatically be open once you've claimed them. This will allow you to uh, designate who the boxes are for uh, before that. The next one is Autumn, which gives you one extra trade per week. Um, cannot be combined with another offer. So it doesn't stack, basically. It's kind of like Shanma. Like I could own another three Shanmas, but it's not going to give me any more um, options to choose extra perks in my VIP, for example. Then we've got winter, which is filter competitions 
uh, one of your horses already entered in. This is really useful if you fill a lot and you're looking for your own horses. Um, this allows you to look for where your horses have already been entered so you can put, a, put in a second horse. The next one is uh, four coverings instead of three for donkeys. So if you breed donkeys, this is really useful because donkeys are one of those horses that limited coverings is kind of annoying. So if you have uh, that divine, then you can get four instead. Then this is the one that I was talking about, Shamo, which gives you an extra perk available. So this is the one that gives me um, the availability to have 11 instead of the default 10. Um, then we've got this divine, which allows us to win 10% more equus from each competition you win, except the Grand Prix and it's not stackable so that's another one that you can use. Basically if you had 20 of these divines it wouldn't increase the percentage, only one is going to increase it by this. Then we've got this divine which allows us to cover unicorns uh, six months after they've given birth instead of ten. Super useful if you breed a lot of unicorns. Then we've got longmo which you can reserve boxes right after they are purchased. So super useful, um, kind of like the workshop perk um, that you can decide who the boxes are for as soon as you purchase them. Then you got Rain, which uh, bed horses automatically when groomed. Uh, valid for all horses boarded in the question center or that have a hypnosis blanket. I love this perk. It makes my life so much easier. Then we've got uh, Midas, which is able to use a Pandora's box until 30 years old, not included, instead of 25 years old. So normally you can only use a Pandora's box on a horse that is um, up to 25 years old, but with this you can do it at 30. And then we've got Charming Red, which has earned double energy from stroking your horses on Mondays. Then we've got Cool Carrot, which has earned double energy from carrots on Tuesdays. Shiny Yellow, which is energy consumption when training your horses speed on Wednesdays is halved. Energy consumption in, uh, with Forest Green when riding in a forest on Thursdays is halved. And then Lovely Blue earned double morale when grooming your horses on Fridays. Indigo allows you to get energy consumption for dressage or trail competitions on Saturdays is halved. Ray of Purple is energy consumption when your horse is performed missions on Sundays is halved. Then we have the legendary horses, which are these ones down here. We've got automated mission breakdown management with Altair. With the Mirror, we got automated leather and crop harvesting from Meadows, so you don't have to do it yourself. Then we've got, uh, with Tormenta, we've got automated retrieval of items crafted in the workshops, except for buildings, once per hour. And then we've got uh, Zalidia, which shows reserve access to the equestrian center based on a certain skill instead of based on the total skills. So if you're looking for horses with a certain amount of skills and a certain skill, then you can set it to that rather than the total skills of the horse. Then with Bucephalus, you can bulk horse uh, register in equestrian centers. I'm going to demonstrate this one because it's a great perk. It's amazing. I love it. <laughs> um, so basically, you get to select all of the horses if, with this, which is just fantabulous. So if we click check all, board an equestrian center, we can automatically board all of those horses. Um, so long as we can find enough boxes and we have enough money. So I'm not going to do it, but basically I would click on one of these and it would register. And it tells me I don't have enough money because I don't. But uh, that's a super useful perk and uh, really, really good. So we've talked about all the VIP perks. We've also talked about how to qualify for them. Now, in terms of whether it's useful to you, um, you need to think really long and hard about these things. And there's certain perks there you might be thinking, oh, that perk is so useful. It would be great if I could have that. If it's just one perk, it's unlikely that it's going to be useful to you. You want to have a good number of perks there that are going to be useful to you. They're going to make you equus. They're going to make you passes. They're going to basically be of value to your game. The way I like to think about VAP account is, unless you're getting the value back, or at least breaking even with VIP account, then it's not worth it for most people. So for me, if I have VIP account, I want to make more than 10 passes every month, or at least break even every month in order to maintain my VIP. Because if I'm losing passes every month by getting VIP and I'm not making money back, it's a waste of time. So you need to decide what are your goals, uh, what perks there are going to be useful and add uh, to that, whether that's saving you time and letting you get more done, maybe letting you get up the rankings faster, blob horses faster. Um, like for me, one of the best perks is that one where you can personalize the layout of your horse's page. That saves me so much time. Um, has done in the past. Whenever you're th going through a blopping war where you're trying to blop horses as fast as you physically possibly can, you want your interface to be tailored perfectly for that. So think long and hard, even if you just write a list of the things that you'd like, and then figure out whether those things are going to add value to your game. 
if you just want to try VIP out for a month, um, you know, do that. But if you decide that you are going to use VIP and you're going to use it consistently, then try and go for the six months rather than the one month because you're going to get an extra free. And as I said, look out for the offer sometimes that we get where you get 50% off, uh, as I have seen in the past, where you can get a month for five passes. Look out for that. Um, it can be really, really good. And I know a lot of people extend their VIP during that time. Um, so yeah, that is just a couple of the things to think about. Um, if you want to know a lot more about a lot of these individual perks, do check out my channel because there's a lot of videos on the different parts of these perks, especially a lot of the VIP team perks as well, um, which we'll go into more detail. And there's a video that I'll link at the end of this about the best VIP perks and why I think uh, they're some of the best. It is an older video, but I think some of the stuff in it's still uh, reasonably relevant. So anyway, Scrubs, I'm going to leave it there. I hope you settle over there. Bye!